Do it's better, get better, get better. Please get better. Get better, get better. The slogan. Yeah. Um, We're good. I was saying, like, my husband eats like a, a varsity basketball player. Like, he comes <laughs> home and just drinks two liters of soda. I was like, we have to make this stretch. <laughs> yeah. He drinks four liters of soda in two days. Everything's gone. Pandemic. Pandemic. Yeah, pandemic. Um, all right. Looks like it's showtime, everybody. We call it Bring It In here on True Hoop. And uh, David Thorpe posted yesterday and managed to ask for questions in the chat right at the beginning. So uh, I've been taunted. I've been, I've been notified. And here we go, everybody. If you have a question today, please click the little chat button, pop it in there. We will integrate it seamlessly into the conversation. Or if you want to ask it yourself on video, please use the word video. Um, special, David, something very special is happening right now. Are you ready? True Hoop special correspondent, Adina Jones, is here live <laughs> from somewhere else in New Jersey. Adina, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, lockdown day 257. <laughs> and I already got a promotion as this uh, special correspondent. I'm super excited. It's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I went from sitting on my couch uh, to not having a clean shirt on for three days to getting a new job. So it's fantastic. <laughs> um, Yesterday was my first day of pajamas all day. I felt really kind of guilty about it, but it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm coming to you live, not from the back room of Foot Locker, but <laughs> from my second bedroom. So what my family, what we do is we are sneaker resellers and yeah. we started our own business in the midst of a pandemic called anotherlane.com and we sell high net worth sneakers. So buy, sell, trade, we got them. And it's actually been doing really well. People are just like, I'm going to spend my Rona check on sneakers. And if that's what you want to do, I'm fine by that. Do, do you know, do you know a guy named Mr. Fomer Simpson? Yes, Fomer is a good friend of the family. And you know why we like him too? Because he's an actual hooper. Like he but He's ball. amazing actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he lives here. He lives here. He helped me coach my son some this year. I know him very well. Oh. He's a big man now, but he, I think he played with, um, uh, who was the great New York City legend? It wasn't Lenny who Cook. Is? It was, um, maybe Wilkin? it was Felipe. No, not it, one, one of the great New York City legends, he was the point guard on that team. He was a oh, really, really okay. good player. He's still a very good player now. Yeah. My husband played um, in, really, this is his collection, and I'm helping sell it, but my husband played in New York City, too. And, um, yeah, like, he, we always respect hoopers because that's where our love for shoes came from was hoops. Not yeah. necessarily, you know, hype beast on, on apps and things like that, but it came from, from hoops. Is this a good time to talk about Will Smith? Oh, I mean, my good friend Will Smith, you mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nothing deal. Um, yeah, so Will Smith, he is doing this thing called Will at Home, and he contacted uh, my husband and I, not like him personally, but his contact, his uh, casting folks, and he did a special like couples therapy with us because he wanted to see how couples were doing during quarantine, and. It was, you know, it's been tough. You know, sneakers are still like arriving at my door and I'm like finances and we're yelling at each other. But my good friend, Will Smith came in and he <laughs> talked to us about, you know, failure and, and how to succeed in life and how, you know, you got to fail to succeed. And it was just, it was a good word from my brother and it wasn't even Sunday and he was preaching. So yeah, it just, it just really feels nice to, to have the Fresh Prince in my circle. <laughs> it was great. It was so great. <laughs> It's so cool. And like our Instagram followers shot up. So like shout out to Will. And, you know, he, the caption he wrote was like, uh, go buy sneakers so Sneaker Galactus doesn't have to sleep on the couch. And I was like, yeah, you got it. Yeah. When you say high net worth sneakers, uh, what are we talking about? How much is this going to send me back? So, uh, oof, oof. hey, Jared Hector, what's up? <laughs> am, I, is, am I supposed to do that? Like, say hey to people? Whatever you, you want. It's your show. You're supposed to correspond. You do it. You do it. Too well. It's fine. Um, high net worth sneakers. So we have shoes that we call player exclusives that were like specifically made for the player, and you can tell where they'll. Hey, Devine. Uh, they'll have the the number of the player, the special colorway, and sometimes the specific size for that player, right? Yeah. Um, and they can set you back. I mean. We had, I'll just say that we had ones in museums that were traveling the world and they can set you back like five figures at least. Whoa. If, so we have one shelf that's just like the five figure shelf. And then you got your, your everyday Yeezys and things like that. So I consider them museum quality and museum collectibles at certain points in time. They're works. If I held up a shoe right now, could you tell me how much it was worth? Uh, my husband could. 
<laughs> yeah, the Jesus sandals. Um, <laughs> not the Jesus. Those are the chancletas. The Jesus chancletas. Sounds That's expensive. Sounds expensive. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I doubt it. Going, going for high quality in Brooklyn, I'm sure, in Carroll yeah. Gardens, Park yeah. Slope. <laughs> exactly. All right, so you've been hard at work um, reporting on pandemic activities. Uh, what, what, what's the deal? Yeah, I mean, CNBC, whoever holler at me, like I'm out here in these, in these pandemic streets and really spending my days and nights just for you on Twitter, seeing what our NBA players are up to during lockdown. And what I've discovered is NBA players are people too. Mm -hmm. and they are going through it so I, they're doing a myriad of activities so i decided to like kind of put it into buckets so my first one is nba players and man's best friend and their pets like um that's all they got at this point in time it's either like their practice partner or it's just their partner in life right now so uh i can start the screen share and we can look at some of them right on yeah all right let's do this here we go mad the magic here we go Oh, yeah. yeah, how are we looking? So Drew Holiday up first with the cutest, I don't know, Doberman right now. Wine Reiner, maybe? Yeah, they're having a moment and it's super cute. Why would you like a moment like this? <laughs> Is this comfortable for you? Hmm. And then Zoe's <laughs> So getting that work in, uh, what is dope with it? I think that's a pit bull. I think I might be wearing flip flops. I will, yeah, but I mean, check out the, the agility in flip flops. So right, <laughs> and then shout out to the wave cap. The wave cap. Uh, a friend of mine started this Instagram channel called Wave Cap Heroes, where she just takes <laughs> candid photos of people in do rags, and I really believe this is a candidate <laughs> at Wave Cap Heroes. Can we watch it one more time? Okay. 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 Uh, that's what I want to see his shoes. That's a, <laughs> that's a Rottweiler he's playing with, isn't it? I think so. I think so. <laughs> Why would you me like this? That's a beautiful dog. Dog's not impressed. Not but impressed. It's in the wrong place. Yeah, those are definitely slides. Yeah. Yeah. Lot of it. <laughs> That's like an injury waiting to happen. It is. Though. It is. It is. It is. It is. So, yeah, the the big dogs are always in the wrong place. Like they should. They think they're lap dogs, but they're not. And then you guys might have seen this on the the famous horse challenge, which I'm sure you'll talk about later. That happened uh, on ESPN. Uh, Zach Levine with some lockdown defense from I think another pit. That's a pit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great rebounding. Mm, mm, mm. Better off that. <laughs> Zach, said later on, Zach said later on that uh, he, he, he was Pat Beverly esque. <laughs> <laughs> that the dog was Pat Beverly -esque in the way he locked him down. And I was like, all he needs is some black Air Force ones. And yeah. definitely black. <laughs> And then uh, Clay Thompson and his uh, his partner, they got a new addition to the family. Uh -huh. Cute music, cute, super cute. Uh, crazy thing is that Clay has a, a puppy. I don't know if you guys remember Rocco. You remember mm -hmm. Rocco? That yeah. Big deal, right? Yeah, big, big, big deal. Super big deal. Uh, but. Rocco helped him through rehab and everything. So I just want to know what the di the dynamic is going to be in the house now that Rocco's got some competition. That sense. And the then like half tummy. Yeah, he's so yeah, cute. Tummy. Yeah, I bet it smells he's, good. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm here for tummy. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like more puppy tummy. And then this isn't necessarily a dog, uh, but it's another type of pet. Maybe find in the wild. Ben Simmons is certainly losing it right now he's got a new fish this is his house this is his house and i think we're you're right we're learning a lot about nba players right like super dope fish tank 
Well, it's like, how bored are you when you're like, I know, we'll take the video camera. <laughs> I'll stand on one side of the fish tank. You stand on the other side. And then I'll hold my breath, right? Like, <laughs> this, is, this is where we're at. And this is probably right. just the tip of the ice. It's a tip of the iceberg when it comes to the boredom we've seen amongst these. But I will say they're keeping me entertained, which is, yeah. which is a big plus. So. So that's the takeaway is that they're thinking about you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What, is it, what is it not about me? <laughs> that is, so you. shout out to everybody. Yeah. I think next week, maybe some, some family ass stuff, some, uh, a okay. lot of workouts going on, going on too. So all in all, would you say you're worried about them? Um, yeah, I'm not worried about them. Um, no, nah, okay. no. Nah. They're keeping okay. saying, if anything, it's broadening their personalities. Okay. Okay. Staying home. Getting. yeah so um you're welcome to hang out i don't know i know there's some uh, competition for your wi-fi you let me know what you need to do yeah yeah uh i i made a rule in the house no wi-fi usage from other people for the next 45 minutes so i'm here oh you have, you can declare that yes Jeez. yes it's like, All right. you can do that when you're a special correspondent you can do that <laughs> <laughs> perfect okay so let's roll right into talking about this horse competition i think you both have watched at least some of it is that right yes too much of it what are your impressions? Go ahead, Adina, because I have nothing oh. to say, so you go ahead. I was going to say, like, David, you go first. Listen, uh, A for effort, A for effort, I will say that. Uh, the the quality was, was pretty shoddy, and I was thinking about it from a broadcast point. It was definitely taped, so there was just, there was so much more that could have been done for yeah. it in a tape. A live, you really have no control of, but tape, a lot more could have been done, but I'll let y'all pontificate more and wait judy do you have that can you show those tweets please please um whose tweets are these uh just someone uh, they oh, okay. collected some tweets but <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> that was funny <laughs> it was like a it was a broadcast crisis i feel like it was like a i was very excited for the idea i was excited people were trying new things and then, well, David, you were flat out mad at me. Yeah, this is my favorite one. The uh, Blair, Project. Blair Hoops Project. I, I asked David to watch it a few minutes of it just to prepare for this conversation. And later he was like, we're not friends anymore. No, we're not best friends. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> it didn't take you out of the friendship, but I, bet, I said you're suspect as a best friend. I, I don't, as I told him, the last All-Star game I watched was Magic Johnson's last game. I don't like watching exhibitions of anything. I, I spent all my time watching actually real basketball. But of course I did what my, what my partner and boss asked me to do. And I was just cursing the whole time. I thought it was, and I watched the best one, I guess. It was Chauncey versus Trey. Yeah, that was the, the comeback. For the comeback, yeah. I, I, did, I did miss a lot of the comeback because I fast forwarded to the very end just to see who won. Because yeah. it was just hard for me to stomach. I, I just think, and I've talked to you about this and we've talked on air about there's better things you can do with a clock that, that force the guys to run and jump and shoot and move. And, um, I, I just, yeah, I, I just, it, I, it left me really like, is this what we're down to? I'd rather watch repeats of great games. Um, and I, I, I think the other problem too is it's, it's on network TV because Adina kind of made a point. If you put it on HBO or any uh, cable that we're allowed to cuss and let these guys just show their personalities as someone mm -hmm. who's coached an awful lot of, you know, well-known and amazing players, they're very funny, as I told you. And, uh, and they, if they emulate people well and they can, make fun and talk trash at the highest level. And it's hysterical to hear them do that, but you can't make, it's like, it's like asking Picasso to call it within the lines when you tell them they can't say certain things. So they, they really miss an opportunity to be having a very fun thing where the horse part was the secondary part. It's their personalities that should win. They right. wouldn't see any of that. At least I didn't. There was a, the, yeah. one of my, my first thought, it happened when I, the first thing I saw was um, a Paul Pierce moment where he had to do like a, a some kind of reverse layup and you could, I mean, he's not in playing shape, I guess right now, yeah. but he also clearly just didn't warm up. Like this was a thing he absolutely could have done, but he was just stiff as humans get and just like tried to jump off the wrong foot and just, and he can't easily bail. He didn't even get the shot off an uncontested reverse layup. And I was like, you know, if we all took this a little more seriously, he could at least like jog a little to warm up. 
<laughs> but he was like, also wearing like a bubble vest, right? Was like he's a bubble coat. And another thing that that really just hurt my feelings watching it is I just felt really poor <laughs> watching these guys shoot on their like full court yeah. basketball courts and next to a castle and <laughs> indoor basketball courts and then panning to their pool and I, and I literally could touch my my refrigerator and my bathroom at the same time and I, it, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, but look at the dollars and shoes you're packing there. Yeah, yeah, just liquidating is the issue, but we're yeah, doing yeah, it another yeah. dot com, another lane dot com. <laughs> <laughs> well done, <laughs> well done. So, Shop like Will Smith. Um, yeah. But uh, all right, so here's my thing. Like we were doing some uh, fancy podcast recording, and they do the thing where you are live on the phone with the person you're interviewing, but where each person is, there's a there's a professional grade microphone, right? And then when you're finished. Um, it's been a live conversation, but they then send the audio file off to an editor somewhere who puts it all together. So it's super top quality. A lot of NPR or whatever works like this. Um, they could have done that. They could have had, everybody had someone with an iPhone where they were, right? They could have shot, your iPhone takes beautiful footage nowadays with much better sound. And then we wouldn't have had all that grainy interruption of the recording live over Zoom, right? And so, or, 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 um, like, uh, this guy, Milt Lee, uh, who used to work for the Brooklyn Nets, um, who I think David knows. Maybe you yeah. don't know. I think you told me. To, but um, he was the CEO of this company called Key Motion, which basically is like an AI broadcast of a game. It's happening in stadiums all over the world. They set up some cameras, and then the computer just directs it cut to the, from this camera to that one. And it does like a really credible job. There are other companies like it. And I think for a reasonable fee, they could have just set up cameras like that at each of these houses, right? They would have ups some boxes of gear over or maybe a technician shows up and sets it up but um my point is with a little more planning i think it could have been a lot better looking a lot more successful and um then i got my conspiracy theory hat on well not really conspiracy theory but as someone who worked at espn for a decade i'll tell you there's some old school like the divisions of espn right digital has been an afterthought because it's like a giant cable tv behemoth and the people who control broadcast with Mark Jones commentating and stuff, this is the broadcast people. And they don't want digital to be the way we all most love broadcasts, right? I'm, like, because they have a whole business that depends on everybody staying in the cable lane. And so I feel like, I feel like in a way it was like, oh, they just, I felt like I was looking at something that they, people who produced it didn't want it to succeed. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I felt like, so are you you're saying henry so it's almost like how years ago uh nba writers established nba writers how they looked at bloggers or just the internet yeah mm -hmm. right it, it was this is like yeah. a new york times writer perfect for example a new york times writer in like 19 howard beck i was on yeah. a panel with i love howard beck yeah. we were on a panel together you know 10 years ago and he's basically like i guess i'm the dinosaur i think you need to have all these newspaper skills and blah 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 like he just was crotchety about it right <laughs> same exact thing <laughs> same right. exact. these are people who want to, the, you know espn's really good at a lot of stuff one of them is like renting a satellite truck there's only a limited number of them in the country and directing right. them okay now you're gonna drive to lsu and then you're gonna then you're gonna move over to memphis for this game and like like all of the trappings of a big time broadcast, right? That's the definition of what they do is making it not Zoom. Right? Yeah. Making, events. making it super it, it, HD, which is a thousand people who make six figures, right? Yeah. And if Zoom is credible as a way to do it, then the industry's radically gonna upend. Well, you, you, you even made a, a great point. Like you talk about the division, like there's even a physical division so i remember when i was up in bristol you know i i worked very much so on the digital side uh in social media and as a writer on the website so i'm in building four yeah. and literally there are people who worked in building three or in the studios that i wouldn't i didn't know for two years <laughs> and, right. and i'd meet them later on in new york and they'd be like hey you worked at espn i was like oh you're in tv like i don't even know you and that right. part doesn't exist right uh, it's such a separation of church and state and possibly that's the reason for it or you like honestly when it, there's there are a lot of separation things like that one of them was um i, I you know mark schwartz the tv personality um no. ESPN. so mark at one point was like i forget i was staying where we were leaving dinner or something and i was going to where i was staying which was like the hotel espn could, would allow me to stay in in miami right it's fine i'm not complaining it was great but he was like why don't you just stay in the mandarin oriental like everybody else and i'm like 
Mark, we like, no, we don't get to do that. Like, 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 like on the internet, <laughs> I get paid in retweets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of divide there, but I did actually later get to say that hotel is very nice. nice. Biscayne cool. Bay, Manor Hotel, I recommend that highly. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I feel like that was a little bit of the crisis. So are they doing more horse? Are they are they doing like the semis and the finals? Yeah, yeah. on Thursday. So we're gonna have to go through this again. Yeah, I won't. I won't be there. I mean, or not? Yeah, we can. We're allowed to All skip it, I guess. But what about after that? Because we're we're still gonna be doing this for a while. Do they have plans to do more? Do we know? And, and maybe different. Hey, I'd rather watch around the world and and where you can make sure everything's measured out right and they're shooting at the right length. Because in horse, I mean, I saw Trey Young. He was shooting like in rocks. Because his the dimensions of his driver wasn't the same as as uh, Chauncey's. Right. Well, and Another I guess uh, wait, who had the rain? Paul Pierce was in the rain, I think. Paul Pierce and Chris Paul had rain. And Chris Paul. Yeah. And then uh, there was wind. Yeah, it's it's not going to be perfect. <laughs> right. Which is okay. I mean, in outdoor sports. That's what happens in outdoor sports. It does so seem like we could probably pretty safely get. Um, there have to be a lot of empty gyms where one person could show up, right? And shoot mm-hmm. indoors. Right. 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 That, that could be next. That could be next. That's a big, big innovation. Well, yeah, you yeah. just their own practice facility. That'll be opening up pretty soon, I bet. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Yeah. Yeah. They'll have to, you know, I'm sure those things are already cleaned and the team will just let their players come in the practice facility and, and set up a camera. That won't be hard to do. Those, those facilities are nice. Yeah, if you had your vendors, your key motion type vendors, they might have already have cameras. I don't know. Oh, right. It's possible. Probably not. But Another thing they could do to possibly spice it up, and I was talking to a friend of mine, is take submissions from people on the internet and be like, what kind of shot would you like Zach to do or whatever? I mean, we're all trying crazy shit in our driveway, so yeah. that's what we're going to do, right? And then maybe spice them in, a little B-roll, maybe speed it up a bit. Okay, I'm going, here's one step crazier. Um, this might be the time that we could have, I know the video game makers want to make a thing where basically like simulated player uh, out there at home can play on the court with Zach Levine, right? Or shoot against Zach Levine, right? This is probably the time to bust that out. I know the technology kind of exists, right? This is the idea is that video games of the future, like, you know, you'll, it, let's tell you, I think you can kind of like we golf against like, you know, simulated PGA player, like now oh, like, wow. Right yeah. now would be the time that, you know, I would try to take a shot at my living room that the Wii or whatever device captures and then Zach Levine has to make the shot that I just made or whatever in real yeah. life. I think because like there's this whole idea of playing inside and playing for the world and playing for millions. Like yeah. I could technically as a person in my living room have the same audience that Zach has if you pair me up in a Wii game, right? And we're both contributing towards the, the overall wellness of the world by playing online it's it's actually a good idea i think user generated content in any aspect anytime you can get fans involved is always a good play yeah because uh, this is the, the first time we get to break the, the third wall per se i don't know if they did ratings but i think adina's videos are more interesting than any horse game they should they should just the players just film yourselves doing stuff you do at home with your dogs and your kids uh, and that'd be probably more entertaining. It's it's more organic. Yeah, yeah just force. We got a question saying, uh, "Do you think low production?" Uh, it really, this is a private question just to me, so I'm going to protect the <laughs> questioner's name. Um, but thank you, questioner. Um, <laughs> do you think low production value, basic game structure, might be a tone decision related to our national mood to prevent PR backlash? Mm. Mm. Right, because the NBA is so clever with that. <laughs> I feel like we should all be wearing like tin foil hats and and like X Files plays when we read this. <laughs> Maybe we need more things to talk about if we're going twenty minutes on conspiracy theories around the horse competition. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's an interesting it's an interesting thing to talk about. It is. Um, I, I I wish, and I, I happen to adore our commission, the commission of the league. No one's perfect, and and these are unprecedented times and. Henry, you, you've written and talked about, you know, how the NBA kind of accidentally, I mean, they screwed up a bunch of stuff, and then one, one guy in Oklahoma City saved the day, in a sense. Um, but I, I don't think they're thinking that. First of all, I think they knew no matter what, it's not going to be like a game one of a playoff game or even just a game in April. Like, this is a couple of dudes you know, shooting outdoors wearing jackets. 
So the, almost no matter what, it was going to be great. Here's what I like about it, though. Like the, there's a shortage of innovation in basketball because it's been seen as too expensive to experiment, right? Like you don't just try a bunch of stuff in a primetime broadcast on ABC, right? But in a pandemic, you do. So I like that they're just trying stuff. I agree. Just I keep totally trying agree. more stuff. Like it won't all be this bad. In fact, everything will be better. <laughs> well, they have to try. They yeah. got. I don't know what advertisers are doing, but they have ad dollars to make up for, right? It, when you were watching that horse, there was a State Farm commercial. I think there was another one in there. So hey, if you you know got to put it on the back of Paul Pierce's jacket or whatever it is, they're gonna have to make up. So they're gonna have to keep innovating. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'll go ahead. go ahead. No, no, no. I insist. You go. On the subject of uh, tone, uh, as someone who tries to study comedians, you know, going back to Richard Pryor, my favorite, um, we are, he, our species needs to smile, right? That's why I wrote that thing on LeBron a couple weeks ago. It's, it's very important for our mental health, incredibly important for our immune system to, to, to leave, let stress leave our bodies. And uh, if, if the NBA and ESPN can come up with ways to help people even for 30 minutes, they, you know, we all live, I think, in loving households. That isn't the norm, or I shouldn't say it isn't everyone getting that. So if this can bring some kind of stress relief to families and allow for a more peaceful place, and if, if someone laughs and smiles, great. I don't think the NBA should be worried about tone. I think they should, I mean, they have a job to do, but also, we all could use that escape. We could all, we, I mean, some people more than others. So whatever they can do to come up with stuff, this wasn't it, but they're allowed to make mistakes. It's the first time. Let them try to figure stuff out. I'm, I'm behind that 100%. Wait, I have a question. Dean, have you ever been involved in animation? Uh, basically, is animation something that people can do from home? Animation, is it something you can do from home? So you can do motion, a uh, motion graphic. So for example, yeah. Um, you can green screen, like give someone a, a mocap suit, a motion capture mm -hmm. suit, uh, which I've actually purchased for some of my freelancers at previous jobs. Mail them a motion capture suit. We might need to know more about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. And I was like, basically I built Pixar Studios in someone's basement for freelancer. And I was like, provide me content. Thank you. Uh, you can send someone a motion capture suit and yeah. the motions that they create then send that information to a motion graphics person and that person can design around it. So, so wouldn't you like to see like Russell Westbrook in a mocap suit doing whatever the hell he wants to do? And wouldn't that be, that, that's something we could start with, I think. Yeah, well, that would actually be really cool. Like you, and you can turn that person to whatever, right? Like it could be Russell Westbrook's movements, but he's, I don't know, Godzilla or yeah. a, a, a Barney, whatever you want it to be. This is this Henry. we want. Yeah. Henry, we've talked about this. I won't, I won't mention names unless you decide. You'll, you'll know who I'm talking about. But there are really talented, funny people who can engage with athletes and get them to show their whole personality. Mm -hmm. And like I said, many of these players have amazing personality. They're entertainers. They're not just workers, although they do work their ass off in the game. Uh, there's plenty of people that can, we, almost like a talk show on Zoom, and, and they would get the players laughing and acting up, and people would respond in kind. Uh, I actually think there's lots of opportunity for that uh, going forward. SNL did one this last week, their first one back, where mostly it was them at home. I think the next process is letting them interact with each other more so than a few of the skits, which were interaction. Uh, 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 they can bring it out of each other. I think that's something they could do too. Yeah. Yeah, this is what we're going to do. I feel like this is what, like, we need mocap suits for all of us right now, I guess. Is that what we should be doing? Yes, like, yes, mocap. 2K a pop, 2K a pop, we're good. So all this ends up like like David Thorpe in his yard, like, jumping around or whatever. <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, I, think, I think, David, you have, the comedian thing is, I think internet comedians are so highly underused. Yeah. Just, if you think about a lot of the things that go viral, uh, they are, they have a, a comedic tone and pace to them. And a lot of times I used to try to use comedians to like make memes for me or write content when I was, um, you know, in, when I do digital work, because I think people think it's luck of the draw that they just get a funny thing, but the, this is this person's livelihood and how they make a living. And so pairing them up with someone or having them make content, it would be, it would be genius in a sense. To oh, do so. that's good. Yeah, Richard good. Pryor. Richard Pryor made people laugh at his own wretchedness in existence. He, he, I mean, besides being brilliantly talented and a wordsmith and everything else, he could just have he could have a look 
yep. and you could empathize. Even if you didn't like him, you could empathize with his stories. He had to be brilliantly funny too. And then they learned as he got to be more famous, put him with other people and they all got funnier. Gene Wilder was funny. He was way funnier with Richard Pryor. And they used to always say those movies, Silver Streak and the, I've watched all of them. It was, a, they were love stories between two men who just love being around each other. Comedians, the really talented ones, have a way of doing that with whoever they're in contact with. Jerry Seinfeld, not. I, I love Jerry Seinfeld, but he isn't empathetic that way. There's lots of less famous comedians that are talented like that. Putting them, you know, we are in a pandemic. There are scared, stressed people worrying about their next meal and medical payments and a thousand other things. And, and comedians that know how to show that empathy and then make it funny too, would be in a sweet spot right now for sure. Um, I want to change the topic a little bit. Uh, did you guys watch Tiger King? I don't, I don't think you did, David. Yes, did you? No. Tiger King. What? No. First of all, I know you're changing topics, but David, we definitely have to offline because I uh, <laughs> I studied African American comedy in college. Oh, for class to take. So oh, we're gonna be we'll best talk. friends for sure. We'll I'm talk just like gonna go inside now. You guys are gonna <laughs> talk. We're gonna be best friends for sure. <laughs> I, I had every album Richard Pryor ever <laughs> cut. Yeah, everyone. that's one. So, and then Tiger King, though, um, I, I wonder if I would have watched it sans pandemic, but yeah, that bitch Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> She's right next door. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> she lives 25 minutes from me. Yeah, yeah. watch your back. Watch your back, yeah. pal. She's right. coming for you. Tiger, okay, so the one thing that got me with Tiger King was, because I watched Tiger King and I watched McMillions because I'm, you know, cultured like that. What is that about? McMillions was remember the mcdonald's uh peel off games you yeah. not games? so someone was rigging it and people were winning millions of dollar prizes oh and the fbi had to investigate it they were trading the pieces so the fbi investigated this right and then the fbi also investigated tiger king and i was just floored by how many misbehaving middle american people the fbi was investigating for dumb crap for dumb stuff and i was like is this what they're doing with my tax dollars is investigating the tiger king and mcmillions um that was what i grasped from from these two things so wait so the woman in tiger king that clearly killed her husband apparently <laughs> did she agree to come on the show oh she's they, they probably interviewed her for weeks yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that wasn't very smart yeah well that was i mean it's not like a show about that murder it's, it's also it's a show about multiple zoos like roadside zoos and all of the drama and like one of the through lines it's a little hard to get over is the fact that her husband mysteriously disappeared and the way everybody talks about it is a little she worse. fed him to a tiger i don't know maybe it wasn't there. <laughs> I mean, that's what, is that what people are assuming yeah quote unquote yeah yeah actually but that's not a good way to i mean that would leave a lot of bones right that's just not a um, well, that's what, smart. that's what Carol says. <laughs> Carol was like, I, and that sounds like something a guilty person would say like, oh, we leave a lot of bones, but you could really just get rid of them, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I think it? I can connect the Tiger King to the Houston Rockets. You want to see me go. try? Oh, okay. let's see. So um, in a thematic way. So um, the, the problem, the, pro the reason there are these zoos in Oklahoma and Florida with hundreds of tigers is because little baby tiger cubs, I think, I think they say from like week eight to 12, something like that, make tons of money. So I think there's a little quick moment where it, maybe at the zoo in Georgia, they say it's like 600 something dollars and you come in for the day and you tour the zoo and then you get to play with a tiger cub. Or there's another chunk of the show where these people get a bus, a party bus on the Vegas Strip and they just have like tiger cubs on the bus and they charge, we don't know how much, to like do a bunch of cocaine and ride the bus up and down and play with the baby tigers. And um, so undeniable, everybody agrees like the, the, these few weeks of the tiger's life, the cub is worth a fortune because people want to play with it, right? And then it gets bigger and it's like three to $10,000 a year to feed every year of its life. And it's not so cute anymore. And there are plenty of them around and there are allegations, suggestions, whispers at every one of these parks, like the older tigers disappear. Right. And in one case, they dug around, found five skeletons of tigers that that had been euthanized. Um, and exactly why, whether it's humane or not, you know, it's a he said, he said right. kind of thing. But um, OK, this is the best illustration I know of, of this thing I'm obsessed with. That I read in a book that I've talked about before, which is this transaction versus relationship. Right. You're on the party bus in Vegas. You love 
holding that baby tiger, right? Like, like, but this is a transaction. You're spending some money and you're going to ditch that baby tiger when the bus pulls up to Bally's, right? <laughs> or like, if you own a zoo, ideally you don't have a transaction with the tiger. You have a relationship with the tiger where you're going to care for it. It's healthcare, everything for its till its dying days, right? Otherwise you're a jerk. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the thing we're having in this pandemic is like, what's your boss like? Do you have a transaction with your boss? Were they just going to cut you at the first sign of business struggle? Or do you have a relationship where they're going to try to keep an eye out for you even through these hard times, right? So this is where I, it got me thinking about it. Um, uh, right over there is our kitchen. And we wanted to build this kitchen. We went to a financial planner. And she basically said to my wife and I, uh, before you guys can spend a penny on anything in your life, including college savings, whatever, you have to have six months of like basically pandemic account. You got to have your savings for six months. And she wouldn't let us do any fun stuff until we had that. And so, you know, that was like a cramped our style a little, but we did it. And now we're, thank God we did that, right? Tillman Fertitta has a $4 million car. Yeah. A car. It has a little velvet rope around it in front of his hotel in Houston. Um, he's on, I ended up watching some Tillman Fertitta interviews. He's on there talking about, I signed the paychecks for 60,000 people and they turned to me and they're the only reason I ever was successful. He has a yacht. He's had a private jet since 1991. He brags about on and on. He has this giant office he's sitting in. Um, he has to warn his children not to earn $500, not to order $500 bottles of wine in their restaurants. But Tillman Fertitta, this same guy, while we planned for six months of pandemic, uh, 13 days into the pandemic, let 40,000 people go. 40,000 people. So now I'm like, oh, he's like, they were a tiger cub to him, right? He was just playing with the employees a little bit on the bus. And then it pulled up to Bally's and he was like, he might even own Bally. He owns one of those casinos. But um, just like, oh, oh, we're done. Like, I'm sorry. And uh, I, I think that's a, this is the thing that's on my mind is like, were they, does he have the money? Is he so stupid that he doesn't have the money? Or does he have the money and he just wants to spend it on something besides these 40,000 people? You preach in Henry right now. Like, I wish I had an organ. It was like, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. No, we know the answer. Yeah, you're, you're, abs you're absolutely right there. Like, um, we're, we're supposed, I honestly think these people don't have the money that it's all perception or it's, it's in, you know, land and this thing, this is, it's not liquid. It's like these sneakers back here. They're, it's not really liquid at a certain point in time. And yeah, we're tiger cubs in the sense. We're all tiger cubs. <laughs> we're all tiger cubs. So next week we need mocap suits and an organ is what yeah. we're, that's where we are on that. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, Amazon prime. <laughs> I mean, you made me sad. Oh, I'm sorry. I was already sad. I, Cause I read what you wrote before yeah. you could that. And, and um, yeah, again, we know the answer. I have a friend who, who, who's a partner and I told you about him the other day. In Atlanta, they run um, some like breakfast, lunch kind of restaurants, casual, very cool. My wife and I had been to one in Buckhead and they know, you know, the, the eight people that come to breakfast every morning, they know all eight of their names at every hour, the new people come in and of their 40 full-time employees, they've kept 39 uh, on salary. Uh, they're finding ways to make food for hospitals and whatever, and then obviously not charging a lot of money, but they're committed to their employees. Yeah. And uh, they're not billionaires. For sure. They have three restaurants, all small, all yeah. of them are smaller than my house. And um, this guy owns, a, owns the Rockets. Yeah. Right. He owns an NBA team. And, I, and I've, I'm, I have some friends that are billionaires, as you know, because of the NBA. And I don't think they're the devil just because they're billionaires. And no. some of them made their money just because they had this incredible idea and they worked their butt off. And I don't even know how someone made his money. I don't, really, I don't pay attention to it like you do. But whatever, when, when you've made it that far, you, you're not going to make it for long if you don't value people more. And that's, that's where I think one of the lessons we're going to get from this pandemic is who's really valuing uh, everyone else. There's this other funny thing going on, which is like, they just love lecturing people, for right? Sure. Like, like, if you're not good at this, like, so like the art, well, there's a restaurant right over there and they have, they've innovated like every day with the new regulations and the, like, they have figured it out. I'm, I'm sure they had a bad week, but now it's like humming. Like now you go and 
you know, they have a little tent outside and your order, your to-go order has your name on it. It's waiting there. You don't touch anybody. Inside, they all have masks. Like, they've been ahead on every step. And actually, now you, they're starting to, I think you can get, like, produce and groceries from them. And, um, and the whole inside is now dedicated to this giant takeout operation. Like, this is a business leader who yeah. she has like re-innovated this restaurant day after day. And now it's like, it's rock solid. Like they are busy. Um, sometimes on their Instagram, they'll put like all the receipts that are spitting out of the to-go order. It's just like this giant, you know, thing. Like she really did business leadership over there. Like right now, she's not being interviewed by some right. dude on YouTube with a 40 minute lecture about how freaking smart she is. Right. She's just doing the work. But Tillman Fertitta, right. <laughs> who, who dropped everything at the first sign of trouble, or maybe he doesn't have the money. I don't know. Like, um, you know, he's the one who just loves talking about how smart he is. And like, and he wrote a book called "Shut Up and Listen." Like, come on. <laughs> our our twins, as you know, work at Chick Fil A, and I have my own issues with Chick Fil A politically, but I can't argue with what you're saying. Their innovation in this unprecedented time. I, I've seen my kids over the last month. The only place my kids go besides here is there a couple times a week. And they've gone from initially just doing takeout, but everything else be, being kind of normal, to now everyone's wearing a mask. All employees wear gloves that are changed every 30 minutes. Then they wash hands, put new gloves on. And now they're doing it with teams. You only work with select team. That's so great. you're only being exposed to a few other people. And if you're, if you're outside, you're only outside. If you're on the cash register, you're only cash register. And no one's getting food handed to them. The food goes in a bag, which goes into a box closed up then you get the big box and then you take the food out of the box and then it's cleaned it's it's quite impressive and, and I, I know grocery stores are local grocery store at Publix everything's one way aisles yeah same here so you, very smart just and and there's every cashier has plexiglass yeah. so you they can't even breathe on you if they wanted to uh there these are the innovators are what are mm. Did my Wi-Fi stop working? Or what we need to see. There we go. A little bit of time coming up. We might be doing this for a while. Yeah. I actually hope that some of the innovation sticks around because it's forced people to become super creative. Like there was this gym that I went to in Connecticut, real small, just like mom and pop, uh, like hit training gym. And when I moved to New York, I kept telling them like, when are you going to get online? And because I, I want, I loved your gym so much and I miss it. And for about two and a half years, they just kept telling me, well, we're going to do it. We're going to do it pandemic hit and within Damn. three weeks they were up and running you can pay on patreon you can uh you know do a facebook live and it's actually another revenue source for them now and once the the world opens up it would actually behoove them to keep it open so uh they could gain another source of revenue or another friend of mine he's a construction worker he used to have to drive to people's houses to do estimates and that's a lot of time a lot of gas money now he's doing the estimates online and he's gonna charge people fifty dollars if he wants to do an estimate in person. And I was like, another revenue source. Yes. So yeah. There's there's some light in all of this, and I hope that the innovation continues. The other thing that's striking me is like at this point in time, like the closest thing you can do with someone is what we're doing right now, which is not that close. But here we are. There's Adina. There's David. Hey, we're all together, right? Um, well, now that this is like the party, right? This is the, the dinner party or whatever that we're not having. Um, you can connect any people in the world, right? So like I, we were talking the other day about um, my wife has a cousin who's a certain kind of just a huge, the hugest personality, like, like just off the charts, like you, everybody will know every building she's in at all times, right? But she's amazing. But I mean, she's unlike anyone else other than this one other friend of ours who's like 20 years difference in age, but the same, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like if they ever met, that would be something. But suddenly I'm like, it's as easy to connect them as any two humans on the planet right now. Like yeah. now they both have Zoom as of a month ago and now they're looking for things to do. Like they can just be best friends now. <laughs> it's true. It is. There were some, I think some, I forget which reporters, but there were a bunch of sports reporters that were on a Zoom and they said, who's the most famous person you can get yeah. on the Zoom call? You see, like, really I'm impressive. one step from talking to Dikembe Mutombo if you guys just add him right now or whoever you want to. He would be great. Yeah. He'd be a great one. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so we have a little, the only, the only religion we have on the show is that Gerard comes on and asks the question on video at the end of every show. It's Gerard time. We should have music for that too. When you, as long as you have an organ 
let's do that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm no. in for any music that you guys have. That yeah. <laughs> and show me this, this, was, this was great. We actually connected briefly when you're back at Bleacher Beep. I don't remember that, but it's all good. Hey, <laughs> are you in Venice? Where are you now? Is this Paris? Paris, see, I knew you would know. Yes, I'm cultured like that. I, told you. I know that. <laughs> which which arrondissement, Dina? Can you call that? <laughs> no, I can't remember that, but nice. <laughs> I, I feel like we do this thing uh, always on this, uh, on, on Bring It In, where we like rail on billionaires just because <laughs> that's just what we do, but it's fine. Um, it's I don't good. know if you guys saw the, I think it was an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal where uh, Bill Gates, had, you know, is giving like a hundred million dollars to like figure out vaccinations and all that stuff. And someone saying if the Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax had been initiated, he wouldn't be able to do that. And it's wow. like, no, that's not exactly true, right? Like the problem is, is that he wouldn't have to do that because we'd have all this extra money around to do what we need to do. And I just feel like this, and I don't, the person who wrote that op-ed is certainly not a billionaire. I'm like, why are we caping for these people who don't do anything for our own best interest? I just don't get it. Yep, yep. It's like, I, I think it's the, so if he paid $100 million more in taxes, okay, that's $100 million. But the point is we'd have trillions of dollars for health insurance or whatever you want to spend it on, right? Like we need the trillion, not the 100 million. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, a, I'm an economist. Or like point. during the debates, they're all uh, on stage raking on Bloomberg. Like, you're so rich. I'm like, everyone on that stage is right. a billionaire. I, don't, I know you were a school teacher, but you're a millionaire right now. Like, yeah. So everyone calm down. And I think except for Buttigieg, he wasn't. But what is he? He's definitely had more money than, than I do right now. So. Yeah, he's a high net worth sneaker. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Gerard, is there anything else, any other billionaires you wanted to ding before we end the no, show? No, no, I don't want to ding okay. anybody else. I hope everybody <laughs> that's, that's what's most important. No, no, no dinging billionaires. Okay. Tomorrow on the show, um, Chad Ford, former oh. colleague of ours. I think he'll be our first guest from Hawaii, live from Hawaii. Uh, um, uh, and he's written a book. And it's fantastic. So his new background will be real, probably. Yeah, it'll probably be real palm trees. Yeah. Maybe he'll do Paris like Gerard. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Gerard. Thank you, Dina. Thank you, David. Bring it in. Thank you. Talk Thanks to you guys. Later. All right.